Hi, it's Tom Werman, and you're watching CMS TV. Warrior Soul right here on your classic metal show featuring Matt Kramer on lead vocal. <laughs> <laughs> now that of course is Corey uh Corey Corey Clark. Yes. And just before that we heard uh Metal Church uh with uh something for Phil Ooz checking in with us. Sure. He says he says, Hey my dog. I'd like to hear a subtle war by metal church off the criminally underrated hanging in the balance album. Okay. The artwork is as ugly as Jason Corky Lundgren, but the music rips. Thanks a lot. My nigga. Wow. Language, please. Ale and grill. Cook you pal. Ham job. Ham job. Nice. Phil, Phil who's MD. And then, uh, also, uh, Pat Stanton checks in from Wilkesbury, Wilkes bar, Pennsylvania. Okay. He says, uh, hi, Neely and Chris seen Saigon kick supporting their first album opening for cheap trick on their busted tour at FM Kirby center in Wilkes bar, Pennsylvania in March of 1991. Both bands put on a good show to, to a good response considering no one knew Saigon kick hail and hail to Neely and Chris, uh, both bands, let's see, uh, also met Neely with Dokken at Penn's Peak and Jim Thorpe, PA, last year. Wow. Uh, after a good show, very cool. Also caught tour a tour with Dangerous Toys opening for LA Guns on the Cocked and Loaded Tour in Wilkes Bar in 1989. Mm -hmm. So there's a guy who uh, who's had concert experience as well. All right. Look at that artwork. What were they yeah, thinking? I know. It's just like, what the hell? Yeah. That really is bad. Yeah, we, we talked about this. I, I did a little pop on on um, New Year's Eve on the Decibel Geek um, New Year's Eve show. Okay. They did a live show, and one of the things they were doing was rating the – they had like a uh, rate the worst album covers competition to see what was the worst of all time. And I think this one. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. I mean, it's terrible. I, I, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. I mean, this is like <laughs> a this is like a, a fat punk rocker hooker wearing mm. armor. And what's and with the tiny feet? It, the first thing I noticed is how small the feet are. The feet couldn't hold that up. And you got no the, way. Then you got the lo long black, you know, the long black ghetto girl nails. Yeah. It's like, what is this picture? But then, the, then it's got the horrible metal church tattoo on her arm. It's it's all bad. There's not one redeeming quality on this thing at all. But then, but then she's wearing a peace sign around her neck. Yeah. Great. I mean, that's just so bizarre. It's It's one of the worst ever. fucking gym <laughs> yeah it's great wonderful and as you know metal church is one of my favorite bands of all time in sure. fact i i've uh patterned the uh classic metal show logo after the metal church sure logo. Mm -hmm. and uh you know but that album coverage is terrible you didn't pattern anything after that no not at all <laughs> I see that you're doing some um, some promo uh, disc work for uh, Kendall Peters. Me? Yeah. I am. I don't know. I thought I no. thought I saw you do like a not reading. Kendall Charlie Kendall. No. It, what it, maybe it might have been something old. I don't know. It was it was like uh, Kendall Peters graphics or something. Oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah I, I that popped up on something recently. Oh, you know, it probably during the best of could have been, it was probably one of those videos from the best of, and it was tagged on the end or something. Yeah, was just or like, oh, is she, she back to doing that stuff again? I have, I have not talked to Kendall in a very long time. Me either. She Maybe just, a year she disappeared. Yeah. I, I talked to her about a year ago and 
you know, I tried to ask her what the fuck happened, and she just, you know, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Okay. I was like, all right, you know, whatever. As long as it wasn't me. She's like, no, it wasn't you. It's like, okay. okay. Because when you told me, you know, she disappeared and she just stopped doing her show on, uh, on uh Corey's controlled noise yeah, yeah. Corey's channel and just disappeared and it's like what the what the hell yeah i don't know i really don't know what happened there but <laughs> i hope she's doing well i like kendall but yeah that was that was old okay i was just wondering i just saw that yeah. pop up i was just like well, okay uh, is she back doing that because she's done mm -hmm. some work for me yeah obviously she did the cms logo mm-hmm and she's done some work for me in my other business and you know yeah she did she does good work she does absolutely so, this logo between us that's kendall yeah she she did that for me i mean i gave her some direction and kind of what i wanted and yeah. she delivered yeah. but yeah the the uh is that what it is i don't know, I, I don't know. i'm just posting it up there i don't no, know I if that's i don't it. know but but if you look at the uh, the metal church logo and look at the CMS logo, uh, that's that's what I kind of patterned it after because I like sure. that, I like that look. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am, however, since you brought it up, I am yes. doing work with Charlie Kendall. Are you? I am. I'm um, I'm doing pretty much all the interviews for Metal Shop. Yeah, that's what you said because he's taking time off or something or not. Not doesn't Charlie. Have the time or... He just doesn't have the time and yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm obviously talking to bands all the time, so I'm letting him mind some of the some of my interviews. You know, just take a clip here sure. and there if he wants. He, you know, I don't give a shit. And um, you know, I I did one for him the other day. Um, a band that's on the new edition of um, Metal Shop called Paralandra. Okay. I did that interview for for Charlie um last week and. I guess I'm interviewing Dirty Honey next week at some point for okay. for Charlie and as the need be. I mean, he's got he's got really good connections, so it works out for me that, you know, I can do the interviews for Charlie and then I can repurpose them for Chris Aiken presents and I sure. can get a better better quality yes, I guess, bigger names. So Well, since you're talking about bigger names, yeah, you walked right into exactly what I wanted to talk about here. Okay. Cool. This guy has actually been on the show before, and we found it to be a great get because he's sort of an iconic guy in the hard rock music industry. Okay. Rick Emmett. Yes. Formerly of Triumph. He's uh, releasing his definitive hits collection, including a couple of uh, unreleased songs. Okay. And I would imagine he's doing some uh, press, which which he's working with Chipster. Oh, so I should I should be able to get that done. Yeah, so getting him back on the show would be nice, I guess. Mm -hmm. The problem uh, we have always with the show is the yeah, time. It's timing. Yeah, I get the timing. I, I get that. You know, it's too uh, late for these guys. They're, it's past their bedtime. <laughs> which I always guys, find immensely funny because when they're on tour, they're out till like five in the fucking yeah, morning. These guys rock stadiums, you know. Yeah. They partied like rock stars, which they were. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. you know, yeah, well, we want to do a interview at 9 p.m. Oh, dude, I'm already in bed. 9 p.m.? Jesus. Are you kidding me? You know, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> you, guys, you, know? you guys set the standards for partying hardy and you know yeah. staying up all night and up all night sleep all day yeah no offense there band guy but uh we're doing this every week till 3 a.m right and we're always lively so yeah. you can make it till 9 30. <laughs> jesus come on uh the best of hard rock years 1990 through 95 a brand new compilation featuring iconic uh, guitarist rick emmett hand-picked rock tracks from his three duke street releases absolutely blah 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 the spiral notebook plus previously unheard songs remastered with the most up-to-date technology at iguana studios in toronto diamonds provides rick emmett fans with a new listening experience the diamonds cover art features the artwork for renowned photographer andrew mcnaughton okay you know andrew, right 
I do think I do know Andrew. Really? McNaughton. Okay, I was making a joke. Actually, but... I think I do know Andrew McNaughton. All right. Uh, international retail uh, date is set for March 1st through Music in Motion and Deco Music Entertainment, which our good friends Red Rain are signed to as well yes. as as well as Tommy Crash. That's right. A signed deluxe uh, edition of 400 collector sets is now available. Wow, he signed 400 sets. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, for pre right, Well, I guess I don't know Andrew McNaughton because he's dead. <laughs> I All guess right. I'm, I'm probably thinking Andrew McNeese and All right. McNaughton just came to my brain. All right. So you did a lot of work with the other Canadian band, Rush, which hmm. often you mistake triumph songs. That's yeah, very, <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very <laughs> true. Uh, let's see. It's now available on Rick Emmett's web store at rockpapermerch.com. What a terrible. What a Rock terrible paper website. merch. Oh, Jesus. Rock paper merch. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Dumb name. Dumb. Uh, a limited number of hand signed editions will also be available through Deco Entertainment Web Store. The deluxe edition is designed with an album gatefold that includes both the CD with bonus tracks. Shh, bonus tracks. Whoa. An LP on 180 grain uh, heavyweight marble space effect vinyl. Okay. Exclusives include copies of handwritten lyric sheets. A photo of never before seen images. Well, somebody must have seen them if they're publishing oh, them. I was going to say he saw them. Yeah, guitar picks from each album. A uh, lenticular holograph poster of the cover art. Wow. A gold embossed lithogram of the album cover, hand signed by Rick, and a custom felt diamonds vinyl slip mat. How much does this cost? Well, this this would definitely go into the Snake Man's collection upon sale on his website. If so, he had one of these, all for five hundred. Yeah, fifty nine thousand six hundred eighty eight dollars and thirty two cents on Snake Man's site. Right, exactly. What is it on this site? I have no idea. I gotta, oh, I gotta look it up. Uh, I'll have to actually go to the website and see what it is. What's the website? It is rockpapermerch dot com. Rockpapermerch.com. Let's see here. And where is? I don't see anything Rick Emmett or Triumph. They got a lot of bands, though. That we Oh, there's Rick Emmett. Let's see. Rick Emmett. Diamonds, the best of the hard rock years. Yeah, that's the one. Right, this can't. This the, can't. These yeah. deluxe editions. All right, well, I guess the deluxe signed with all that crap that you said is comes with it. <laughs> all that crap. It's junk. I wouldn't want any of that junk. <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's actually pretty reasonable considering how much crap there is in here. How much? Two ninety nine. Oh, way cheaper than that. Oh, really? One fifty. Yeah. One fourteen. Wow. Okay. That's what I'm saying. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah, it is reasonable. For a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of junk in here, but you know, <laughs> it's got a lot of filler. But if you're a fan, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're a Triumph fan or a Rick Emmett fan, or perhaps play some Triumph, yeah, I'd like to hear some Slayer or Metallica or Triumph. <laughs> <laughs> the deluxe edition also touts two new new previously unheard rick emmett original tracks from the absolutely and l el piso facto demo sessions that will mm -hmm. not appear on the retail versions and will not be available on streaming platforms right. the two new tracks will premiere in an exclusive online video stream in late january where rick will preview the deluxe edition and tell stories of his triumph and solo years from his lay it on the line and uh, biography, all purchases, uh, all purchasers of the deluxe edition will receive a private link to the stream. Well, very good. In wow. addition, all purchases before January 31st of 2023, mm -hmm. 2023, I think they meant 2024. I'm sure they did. Will, will be entered into a drawing to win Rick's personal signed test pressings of diamonds, as well as a soiled pair of underwear. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> so there you are. 
Wow. I don't think this is true, Phil. Alex Grassi has a new guitar picks, posters, and a signed gift certificate. For four ninety nine. Alex Grassi. I don't think that's true. And I think you're risking Jizzy Pearl being mad at you there, Phil. Yeah, you so don't want you don't want Jizzy to get mad. You don't want to say bad things about Alex. Jizzy sure. will be pissed. He'll get mad. Yeah. Just ask, well, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you weren't supposed to know that I, I, I spilled the beans. Oh well, tough shit. You shouldn't have known that. Tough shit, was, I know I was, it. I was taken into confidence not to tell you. Shh, well, you know don't what? tell Chris. Why? whatever i mean that was your that was your partner in crime over there yeah i know that (laughs) i know who it was but i mean it's i don't see what the big deal is if jizzy wants to say something to me he can but i know there's no reason why he should be pissed at you there's nobody that supports him more than me i don't like the guitar player in his band sorry he feels the need to stick up for him right but whatever i'm not going to change my stance on him because jizzy's mad at me about it too bad the jizzy's mad at me okay i'll still listen to love hate i don't care dumb well on to more release news okay apparently uh the the wasp box set the 84 to 92 box set that they offered uh, a few months ago yeah it was in such high demand okay that there is now a second edition coming out already a second pressing already wow because, they, they uh, just released the first one like in october or november must have, must have sold out okay due to huge demand from well. the public a second edition of the deluxe 8 lp box set from their capital years is being released on the 8th of march okay hollywood california January 12th, this is hot off the presses. Due to huge demand from the public, a second edition of the Wasp Deluxe 8 LP box set from their capital years is being released on March 8th on Mad Fish. Oh, Mad, Mad Fish has got that one. Good for Mad them. Fish. Good for where, them. Where do they come up with these names? I don't know. Jeez, Mad Fish. Eddie Trunk says the wasp seven savage the seven savage box set is a true must for any fan of this great band well, it's everything you would want in a definitive collection the classic albums sounding as good as ever a beautiful comprehensive book and all the rare tracks in one place a classic collection for a classic band and one of the top releases i've ever seen or heard great the lavish and carefully crafted content is a nice time capsule and a gold mine for us fans. Fistful of Metal says the 7 Savage 84 to 92 packs a nostalgia punch. Well, Metal Hammer says Horde Almighty, a suitably big bastard. <laughs> okay. I have no idea what the hell that means. Is that, a, is that some kind of English speak? Does I that, don't know that, what Horde Almighty is. Horde Almighty. I don't know what that is. Maybe he's saying Horde it because it's an almighty. No, I, don't I, know. I, I, I don't know. Uh, Classic Rock says a blackie bonanza. Well, wow. Record Collector says it's a four out of five, a comprehensive early years overview. Well, they really put that effort into giving those, <laughs> those taglines, didn't they? Jeez, oh, man. Breakout. I don't, what is breakout? Do you know what breakout is? No idea. It's a game Uh, on Atari from the (laughs) eighties. Wasp history, history as well, illuminated and depicted in this truest sense of the word. Well, yeah, because it's the full catalog. Because it's the full catalog (laughs) of. of, Wow. was nothing like stating the obvious. Yeah. Sweden rock magazine says. A fantastic booklet, as well as a whole album of B-sides and covers, make this Colossus unmissable. Nine out of ten. A Colossus. It's it's a Colossus. I thought that was a roller coaster at Cedar Point, wasn't it? Colossus. Boy, they they pulled out all the big words for this press release. Jesus. Yep. Wasp is one of the most consistent and reliable forces in rock music unstoppable and unassailable like a heavy metal juggernaut sent back in time from 
being long distant galaxy. Front okay. and Blackie Lawless is undoubtedly one of Rock's everlasting figures. Well, okay. I don't think he's up there with, uh, you know, Mick Jagger or Keith Richards. I think he is. Is he? I think you missed out. I, I think, I think, uh, you know, when it comes down to uh, one of Rock's everlasting figures, uh, Blackie's cool, and I like him on a personal level, but I don't think he's reached that status yet, has he? Top of the food chain, my friend. Top right. of the food chain. <laughs> Uh, someone whose attitude and vision changed the musical landscape around him in the process bearing fruit to some of the biggest anthems of all their time. The biggest anthems. Of all time, sure. Of all their time. Yeah. Like what? Wild Child? <laughs> Blind in Texas? <laughs> Holy shit. Don't Cry, Just Suck? Who, who wrote this press release? Wow. I mean, if, if this if this box set is so popular, why do they need to talk it up so much? This is a Michael Branvold thing, too, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I was going to say that. Well, there's who wrote it, Michael Branvold. He wrote this? Probably. He's their okay. publicist. Oh, well, I know. I just thought, again, I didn't know if he just sort of repub you know, republishes this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Blackie. It or what. Yeah. Um, their first five studio albums, Wasp, The Last Command, Inside the Electric Circus, The Headless Children, and The Crimson Idol, uh, contributed enough on their own for Wasp to be considered one of the greatest rock bands of all time. By who? B. Lawless? <laughs> Those LPs are uh, presented in this set mastered half speed at air studios london for a superior sharper and more direct and engaging sound look i love wasp as much as anybody <laughs> i really do they're one of my favorite bands but this is way over the top come I on i agree <laughs> Jeez. Packaged with a deluxe red leatherette effect double slipcase, the Seven Savage 1984 to 1992 is completed on vinyl with two more LPs, 87's Live in the Raw and new compilation bonus tracks and B-sides featuring the controversial breakthrough album Animal Fuck Like a Beast. Whoa. Uh, compiled with the full cooperation of Blackie Lawless, the box set also includes a 60-page book with exclusive and rare pictures from legendary metal photographer, including Ross Halfin, Tony Matram, Ma 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 ah, David Plastic, and uh, Paul Natkin. No, no Mark with, Weiss in there, huh? No Mark Weiss. I was surprised about that. No Niels Lozner or whatever his name no. is? Zilzauer. Zilzauer? Whatever. Zilzauer. Yeah. He is not included in this. Those are the names I know. I don't yeah. know. I don't know that whatever that guy's name was that you the said. Only, but okay. The only guy I know is this Mark Halfin. Ross Halfin. Yeah, Ross Halfin. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. He's the only guy out of those mentioned, but you know, the Mark Weisses of the world and the yeah. Neil Zilzauers of the world. Well, those guys might be good too. I'm sure I, they I'm are. I'm not saying they're not. I just don't recognize their names yeah. as far as like notable rock photographers. Yeah, I just don't know them. Along with extensive liner notes from Amit Sharma of Kerrang and Planet Rock. Also included is an extensive Blackie Lawless poster plus a six page folding poster replica from the debut LP. Wow, a replica. Cool. Uh, no, the second edition has no certificate and is not numbered. So if you missed out on the first uh, go round, you don't get the exclusive or the official shit. So in other, so in other words, part two can be produced and produced and produced and produced. <laughs> yeah, it's not the real deal, man. That's right. <laughs> so if you if you snooze, you lose. That's right. So there you are, the Wasp catalog being uh, re-released on a second edition go-round. But it's only the the major label catalog, right? It's not the yeah, it's the Century or no, it's Century the, it's Sanctuary the Records. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to see it include all the good stuff from the from the second era. Yeah. Now that would be a good box set, but no one would buy it. <laughs> 
And then one last thing. Okay. Uh, Freak Show. Yes. Releases the second video, It Hurts Me, written by the late Cinderella Freak Show guitarist, Jeff Labar. Okay. Freak Show releases the second video, It Hurts Me. Can you pull that up? I'm Is pulling that available? it right now. Let's see. What's it called? It Hurts it, Me? It, it Hurts Me. It Hurts Me to drug myself to death. Stop it. Written People for, are going to be mad at you like they are at me, pal. Why? Because I stated what was in the uh, in the report. You're saying mean things. Oh, stop it. It's mean. It's just it's just fact. You're not allowed to have an opinion. Oh. Stop it. Anyway, it was written for the late Cinderella freak show guitarist Jeff Labar. Okay. Which Jeff has has been on this show, and I've hung out with Jeff on numerous occasions over the years. That's right. I, I got quite a few pictures actually with sure. Jeff. Nice, nice guy. guy. Mm-hmm. Very nice guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but apparently, Carlos Cavazo. Here's another one that you could probably nail down. Sure. Is available for interviews. Oh, I could get that one then. I so, should. if you would like a digital copy for review. You can uh, get go to the Freak Show Holix and get yeah, it. I got it. I already got it. All right. Uh, e, e, how do you say this? Eonian? I, I'm guessing it's Eonian Records. Eonian Records. Uh, artist Freak Show reveal their second, their second sing. I think that means single. Okay. These people should proofread this shit before they put it out there. Well, sing wouldn't come up in a word. In a, <laughs> it's just S I N G E. Oh, I don't know. I should have, but the second sing. <laughs> you mean single? You you left out the L. Maybe it's a, maybe the, maybe sing is a guy. Maybe it's like <laughs> Sanjay or something. <laughs> like Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay Gupta. Yeah, and video for the track "It Hurts Me" from the new album "So Shall It Be." The track is written for the late Cinderella freak show guitarist Jeff Labar. It is a special song for Ronnie Borchert. Is that how you say his name? Borchert and the band. Sure. And they captured that this is a performance of It Hurts Me, So Shall It Be, features the incredible talents of Ronnie Borchert, Carlos Cavazzo, Greg Chason, and Stet Howland. All right, so it has good guys. I don't know that Burchin guy, but um, the other three I'm aware of, well, you know, Carlos right. and Stet and yeah, Chase on was in Badlands. Yeah, Stet is in Metal Church currently. Wasp? Yeah. And uh, Greg is, you know, as you mentioned, Badlands. Yeah. You can now watch the video, which got that pulled up. Purchase uh, blah, 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 below are a few reviews of Freak Show, so shall it be. A special accolade to It Hurts Me. The song is easily racking into my top my top 50 of all time says sleaze rocks wow top 50 of all this song is going to be killer then <laughs> top 50 this song must be killer i have not listened to it but i'm gonna can you, can you even mention can you even list a top 50 that's a lot of song i probably could if i song. sat down and did it but is that our guy ruben uh, he writes for them i, I think. know but but who who's in charge of sleaze rocks these days olivier Olivier something. Okay. Uh, this is nary a skip worthy moment on so shall it be says KNAC. Are they even relevant still these days? KNAC. KNAC. I don't know. I guess so. They're get, they're uh, mentioned in the press release. I guess. Uh, the car, the guitars rip and shred as much as the, as the planking and fingerboards allow. Okay. All the right. bass, the bass often peeks in from the background and the oh, foreground. Jesus, Michael, come on, bro. <laughs> this, is, this is rock garage. Who said this rock garage? What is rock that? garage? So let me, <laughs> let me, let me read this in its entirety. The guitars rip and shred as much as the planking and the fingerboard allows. The bass often peeks in from the background in the foreground and the drums knock every booger out of your mouth. 
Fantastic. What a description. The, the drums knock every booger out of your mouth. Wow. What Way is to go, that? Stet. Why are the boogers in your mouth? That's my point. What What does that even mean? Are you eating your snot? <laughs> Uh, Freak Show consists of Ronnie Borchert on lead vocal and guitar, Carlos Cavazzo on guitar and backing vocals, Greg Chason on bass, guitar, and backing vocals, and Stead Howland on drums and backing vocals. Uh, all songs are written by Borchert, Cavazzo, Chason, and Howland, produced by Ronnie Borchert and Andrew DeGura, mixed and mastered by Andrew blah, 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 in Sunnyvale, California. So... Uh, let's see here. Freak Show's debut album was the super group featuring Miss Crazy's Ronnie Borchert. Oh, Miss, Miss Crazy. Miss Crazy. Is that his band? I guess so. Cinderella's Jeff Labar, Quiet Rides, Frankie Benali, and Tony Franklin, who had been played in the firm Blue Murder and White Snake. Wow. So this whole band really doesn't exist anymore. You got that Borchard guy. Uh, that's it. Cause that's, Jeff the, is, that's the, the genesis of the band. Anyway, it's like David Coverdale. Yeah. He's, he is white snake. This Ronnie Borchard. He is freak show. Yeah. He's the Jeff, Dave Mustaine, a freak show. Well, uh, Jeff Labar obviously is no longer Frankie Benali is no longer Tony Franklin. Who knows what he's doing? Uh, fast forward to 2023, different players. Yet another output of amazing hook fill, blazing rock and roll. You say that kind of kidding, but I've heard this is top 50 in somebody's list, <laughs> but it, but it capitalized amazing. Yes. With a big a it, all, all capital letters. Amazing hook fill, <laughs> blazing rock and roll. Ronnie Borchard brings uh, together friends Carlos Cavazzo on guitars, Quiet Riot Rat, Greg Chason on bass, Badlands, and Atomic Kings. Oh. And Stead Howland on drums, Wasp, and Metal Church to record a brand new album, So Shall It Be. Freak Show's founder, Ro Ronnie Borchard, stormed onto the rock scene in 2005 as the frontman of San Francisco's bass, Miss Crazy stormed he stormed onto the scene what scene was that <laughs> i don't know i never heard of him uh <laughs> his vocals quickly solidified miss crazy as one of the best new melodic rock bands and drew quick comparisons to singers such as brian johnson tom kiefer brian johnson and tom kiefer don't sound anything like each other miss steve white and joe elliott why don't i know this band miss crazy uh, yeah well, he sounds like ACDC, Cinderella, uh, Kicks, and Def Leppard. Okay. Wow, those good. Those bands all sound the same. <laughs> this crazy and, and freak show. Ronnie was the lead vocalist for melodic hard rock and glam bands Amsterdam and Trixie. This must be like an LA thing where all these guys play in LA and everybody in LA knows everybody in la yeah that's all i, I know any of these bands that's all about uh that's all i know about as far as this guy is concerned this this well, he's obviously guy. talented being well, of course he is i'm sure he is i mean he wrote one of the top 50 songs of all time okay so let's let's get a stylings of uh, ronnie mm. borchert and uh, his tribute to the late, great uh, Jeff Labar right. of Cinderella. Let's see what he's got. guy that's not tony franklin is it i don't know that's the bass player i mean 
I recognize Carlos and Stett, and I'm assuming the singer is that Borchard guy. So are they trying to tell me that's Tony Franklin? I thought Tony Franklin was a big, tall, skinny, bald guy. Let's see her. Uh, Carlos Cavazzo on guitars. Greg Chason on. Oh, is that eight. Greg Chason? That's Greg Chason. Wow, he does not look the same. This guy's winter gloves on. All right. Is that Brian Johnson? It sounds just like him. He sounds like Joe Elliott. Def Jesus. Kind of sounds like Tom Kiefer, Cinderella. Is this Kiefer coming in doing a tribute to his fallen guitarist? <laughs> Jeez, sounds exactly like him. Wow. He sounds like Steve Whiteman at Kicks. Kind Jesus. Of. Okay. That's who they compared this guy to, right? This was what they said. Brian Johnson, Tom Kiefer, Steve Whiteman, and Joe Elliott. Well, maybe he gets to that. I don't know. Wow. Right. This, this sure doesn't feel like those bands. He sounds like uh, the guy from uh, Simple Minds. It sounds like <laughs> Simple it sounds like Guns to Forget About Me. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's hear a little oh, more. You forget about me don't 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 the, the guy that was married to uh chrissy hind right I think, I think he was married to chrissy hind talk about an untalented household jesus all right here we go oh, in a minute <laughs> he probably did there fellows ooze he probably did he's the wizard of ooze <laughs> All right, here we go. With you. The time was short and sweet, not just a memory of you. All right, maybe, I hear maybe the Joe, the Elliott. Joe Elliott a I hear, little. I hear the Joe Elliott there. A little. But those other guys mentioned should not even be on this piece he, of paper. He doesn't he doesn't have the the razor the razor gravelly razor voice of Brian Johnson at all. Or or Kiefer at all. There's none of that here. Yeah, I and maybe I hear, he does that in his Miss Crazy band, I, but well, I hear the Joe Elliott for sure. Yeah, what? <laughs> okay, come on. All right, here we go. know we're just over halfway in this song so far but this is really creeping into my top 125 <laughs> you know what this sounds like what's that? this it sounds like david bowie we could be heroes yeah that's somebody put that in the chat too i i didn't even see that I just, yeah yeah that's that's exactly what i was thinking yeah 
I guess we'll have to back this up with we could be heroes. Yeah, see what that's I mean, because because I, I didn't know Phil put that in there, but that's exactly what struck me. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's maybe one twenty seven right now. <laughs> It's moving up fast, but it's at 127 for me. Surpass David Bowie's Let's Dance for You. Oh, yes. That's definitely <laughs> dance. That's Look, definitely around four, 483. And Dad's the Blue. That song stinks. What a crappy album that was. Bowie, who did so much innovative stuff, and then he releases just a schlocky he, he, shitbag he, record. He followed trends, man. He did, but that was the, I mean, he set trends for 10 years and then he comes back with modern love, da, 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 yeah. modern man, Ugh. Yep. garbage. All right. want more of this? Yeah, go ahead. All right. I want to see if I can get it up to 75 at one. <laughs> listen, top 50. That's right. Here we go. on yeah that's i see <laughs> he's moved he moved up to 41 with a bullet you know what this reminds me of what's that is those guys that we've covered in the past that that basically bought these musicians to play with him you know oh the, yeah yeah you mm -hmm. know that i mean because if you look at the talent you know the stead howlands and the carlos cavazos yeah, and Jason. Like that, this guy should not be playing with these caliber musicians <laughs> You know, I mean, he's, these, these guys are fucking rocking out, and this guy is doing, I, I don't know what you want to call it. He, he's doing kind of like a soft rock, uh, 70s rock stuff, and these guys are like, you know, banging out on their guitars. And, what are you talking about? I, I thought I was listening <laughs> to Flick of the Switch for the minute. <laughs> that pull up, pull up David Bowie's Heroes. Are you sure you don't mean Let There Be Rock by ECDC? <laughs> Are you, are you sure that's not what you're looking for? I'm thinking Thunderstruck, if you ask me. <laughs> I mean, jeez. <laughs> what am I pulling up? David Bowie? Yeah, David Bowie, Heroes. We could be heroes. Step into Wix. Oh, Studio, fuck you! New web creation <laughs> platform built for... Yeah. I, I wish you could swim. Kind of the same look, too. It's exactly the same song. <laughs> it's a tribute, Neely. Don't it's don't insult. It is. It's a tribute to Jeff Labar. All right. Well, it's a tribute to David Bowie. Both of them are dead. Yeah. As sung by Brian Johnson. <laughs> Tom Kiefer. Tom Kiefer. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. wow. Man. That is a that I, I I don't want to shit on the song because of, because we like Jeff Labar and and it's nice that they did a tribute but 
the words in the press release saying that this this guy sounds like I, I can't get past that this guy is supposedly let's look up this Miss Crazy band. Yeah, I, I don't know anything. About I don't know anything about it either, but let's see if at least in that band he does sound like these bands. Cause I, I don't know Miss Crazy. Is this Miss Crazy? I have no idea. Well, let's try this. Just winging it. Yeah, this is him. Kicks, maybe. Yeah, well, they, they did mention that Steve Whiteman was kind of yeah. like a sound alike, I guess. There's still nothing Brian Johnson in this. Or or Tommy Kiefer. You might as well say James Hetfield and <laughs> Phil Anselmo and um, David Mustaine as well. Because, you know, I mean, come on. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Well, what, what's the name of the band again? Um, freak Show? Freak Show. People, please enjoy the Freak Show. <laughs> Celebrate the life of Jeff Labar. Boy. We loved Jeff. Yeah. Man, it's just... <laughs> but the heroes, co the, the, the heroes comparison is just yeah. overwhelming. Well, maybe you could end the show with something that sounds like Jeff Labar's playing, like, I don't know, Exodus. <laughs> I mean, jeez. Yeah, I, I, I'm positive that those names came from this Ronnie Borchard guy. Yeah. Or Bouchard or whatever his right. name is. I'm positive that, that Branvold did not listen to this music and say holy shit that's acdc yeah that's a complete knockoff no i know that didn't happen there's no way i'm positive that's who he said he sounds like but come on bro I have a little self-awareness yeah on that i one. get that i get the joe elliott comparison and listening to miss crazy i kind of yeah. hear the steve whiteman thing yeah but the but the Brian Johnson and the uh Tom, Tom Kiefer, Kiefer come on kind of a stretch that is not there <laughs> this is funny. I love to discover this kind of stuff. <laughs> Good point, Phil. Good point. Don't know how I didn't pick up on that one. Right. <laughs> wow. All right. So there you are. So freak show. Yeah. Uh, a project band has a new CD out, so go pick it up or listen to it on Spotify or whatever outlet you use. Yes, please do. <sighs> All right. I think we've given these fuckers enough. All right. Well, I got a late request here, and I okay. haven't heard this, but this is somebody that you and I both like. Okay. Um, apparently, Robin McCauley of Macaulay Shanker Group fame. Mm -hmm. Has yeah. a new release out. Yeah, live. Exactly. Yep. And uh, I have a request for uh, the song called The Endless Mile. Okay. So since you loved my Ronnie Atkins request so much last week, I thought you could uh, play the uh, request for the new solo Robin McCauley album alive. The song is called The Endless Mile. All right. Good. So we're going to end the show with some Robin McCauley. Mm -hmm. All um, right. It's been a fun show as always. Yeah. I, I had a blast at first. I tell you what, I, I was like, for some reason, I was like sleepy as fuck at the <laughs> beginning of the show. 
but I kind of like uh, woke up mm. and got with the program as it got were. in the rhythm. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, well, we're going to get out of here. Appreciate everybody who's tuned in and listened to the show and participated in our nonsense. And Chris will have various segments of the show put up through the week and yep. go to the rumble. If you want it firsthand. Yeah. And go to YouTube I, if you want some of it and some of it that I said faggot in, I won't have up. <laughs> exactly. All right. We both like uh, Robin McCauley and uh, I'm going to end with something from his new release. So uh, we're going to get out of here. We'll be back next Saturday and we will do this thing all over again. So until next Saturday, this is Neely along with my very good friend, Chris Aiken. And we're gone. Bye kids. In the ever-evolving world of music, artists need to reach their audience faster than ever before. Introducing Too Immersive For You, the Emmy-nominated pioneers in viewership experience. We've revolutionized the way music artists share their material with the world. Our groundbreaking AI engine generates stunning visuals that bring your music to life. Imagine having your own personalized music video perfectly synchronized to your unique sound in a matter of hours, not weeks. With Too Immersive For You, it's now a reality. Get ready to unlock a new dimension of music visualization. Too Immersive For You, where music meets immersive visuals. Contact us now to discover how Too Immersive For You can elevate your music to new heights. www.musicvideoai.net the internet has changed the game to where you don't need millions of dollars to own your own viable radio or TV station. A good concept and a great streaming platform are all you need. We've got that platform for you. I'll Get Drunk Noise is the best place to stream your very own online radio or TV station. We offer 24-7 scheduling, on-demand options, the ability to go live on your channels, and much, much more. Sell and plug in your own advertisements within your programming as you see fit. Our stations are fully licensed and legal. It's all here for you, so get started today. Just visit www.uncontrollednoise.com and let us know you are ready to broadcast. Uncontrolled Noise, your best place for online radio and television stations.